ball would not have gone in. Ricky Ross knows it. Bruce Vanley on the goal tending that pass, or rather the shot, Jim, would have been short. Look that's, at Bruce. The way, that's the way it looked. Bruce with his momentum following through in the arms about two feet over the top of the cylinder to knock it away. Well, you're going to make those kind of mistakes when you're pumped up. Here's Vanley to the hoop. And the pass was behind him. He had to twist around in the air, and he couldn't reach it. Do you now again getting into kind of a negative streak where they're coming away without the shots and maybe rushing things a little. They need to get their composure a bit. Who's going to get it? Ricky Ross for TU. TU, I think, on the verge of momentum if they can pick up a basket right here, and they're going to go out and slow it and work for the shot. They realize it can be very crucial. Ross from 20 goes 19. Rebound, down court for Doherty, and Ty Nilsson call for the foul just as the ball came across midcourt. And immediately, Dean Smith pointed to Sam Perkins and said, nice pass, get it down the floor quickly, and you're going to cause the other team to make some mistakes. Yeah, TU is work not working too well. Their patience is uh, not what it should be, perhaps. Uh, again, it's the reason why you mentioned, Bob, they're all pumped up for this one. They're in it despite the great shooting of North Carolina, but they were even two times down, able to get the basket back to keep it even. Now the Tar Heels with the free throw line with a chance to pull away by three. There's Doherty's story in the evening. Six eight two fifteen junior, averaging 7.4. All ACC second team last year. So the Tar Heels by four, 32-28. Three minutes, 55 seconds left in the first half of play. Bob Carpenter, Jim Roberts with you here on Tulsa Cable Sports, your five-star channel. First of two we'll have for you this evening. Nelson to the hoop. Dumping it out for Ricky Ross. I think that's what Ty was intending. Creason Hay for Ty Nilsson. We'll have a lot of time between the ball games tonight to discuss with you what's coming up here on Tulsa Cable Sports throughout the holidays. Great, great basketball action involving the hurricane both here and on the West Coast. Steve Harris, Ross. Ricky's just got that I want to shoot look in his eye, Jim. He knows that he's the guy that's going to make some things happen from the outside to maybe give Bruce Vanley a little help inside. Shot from Hay would not go along the baseline. Doherty clearing it down court. Now Braddock will start the offense with three minutes left. Dean Smith's team over Nolan's by four at this time. 32-28. Down deep, Doherty can't control. Turnover. Number nine against the Tar Heels. Checking back in Steve Ballard and Herbert Johnson out for TU. Creason Hay and Bruce Vanley. Matt Doherty leads for North Carolina. Ty Nielsen did a good defensive job as Sam Perkins comes in. The man got in front of him, but uh, just had to make a real quick cut. Was out, not able to make that retain the basketball. TU trailing by four. They bring in Buzz Peterson to replace Doherty. Again, Herbert Johnson is down low. The matchup between he and Sam Perkins, he doesn't take it. Depends on your definition of down low, though, Jim. When Herbert gets the ball, he's a good 10 feet away from the basket or so, and that's too far out for a guy to well, turn around jumper, uh, you know, on a regular basis. Ricky Ross, what an effort. Oh, a board by Steve Ballard wouldn't go. Does he have it? No. Steve Ballard using that big physical strength of his. That's his ball game, Jim. That's what he's got to do right there. Steve Ballard has not played a whole lot in the first half of this ball game, but uh, as you mentioned, it, exactly what he did there as Sam Perkins picks up his first foul is what Nolan Richards wants to continue him, have him do. Now, back to Herbert Johnson. Herbert does not feel comfortable underneath. He's going to have to be, I think, for TU to be a great ball club. He must be underneath and play a better brand of basketball there. Well, Steve's still not on the scoreboard this evening. He's got three rebounds. Good look there at the 6'8 senior from Muskogee. Herbert Johnson is called lane for a, violation. Now he's called for a foul. foul. That means the free throw will count, but a foul coming back the other way. And of course, that is another team foul against TU. So we are in the bonus situation for both ball clubs. Nolan can't understand the call. Herbert has three. Bruce Vanley has two. So TU has two of its three big men in foul trouble at this time, if you consider two fouls 
with 2.20 left before halftime, foul trouble. Three certainly is. It's a very unusual call to get a foul on a lane violation, but that's what it was as North Carolina hits at the other end. Had the ball gone right through, Jim, probably no foul, but when it bounced around on the rim, that made him hesitate and go after each other a little bit. Precisely. Brad Doherty, 6'11", freshman, averaging 8.2 coming in. Black Mountain, North Carolina. You're going to be hearing his name for the next couple of years. They get the offensive board with a chance to go up by six. Braddock dumping it in. Up and hitting is Doherty, and he was fouled. And TU's going to get itself in a heap of foul trouble here. Vince uh, Williams will come in for TU, replacing Herbert Johnson, who has called for his third foul on this one. Fourth foul, Jim. Man, oh, man. Nolan and his team cannot afford those kind of statistics at this time against such a team like this. You could be blowout time fast if you get in foul trouble. Oh, what a tip. Michael Jordan way up there to tip it in. Nolan can't believe it. Nolan says it's got to be goaltending. We'll take a look at it again, and you be the judge of it. There's the tip. It's in the cylinder. It went up over the top of it. and looked to me like it never left the cylinder. And if an offensive man gets his hand in there, that is goaltending, and Nolan is very livid at this moment. I guess it depends on the position of the ball or the man's hand who swatted the ball. I don't know. It looked like the ball was around the cylinder. Steve Harris turning it over. Driving, oh, it's in and out from Michael Jordan. Ricky Ross fouled in the backcourt. This time, Buzz Peterson whistled down. I tell you, had that shot gone, Jim, would have been timeout time for Nolan and maybe his team in big trouble right before halftime. Bad foul there. Yes, indeed, and what's happened is that North Carolina has opened up an eight-point lead and at the same time, Herbert Johnson has got the foul trouble, and at the same time, it has got Nolan upset and the, the ball club upset as well. So somebody has got to be a calming influence, and that's where the a leader comes in for TU, and uh, I don't know whether they have officially gotten one per se, but that guy right there, as the season goes on, is going to have to fulfill much of that role. Mike Smith is ready to come back in. Second one won't go. The Hurricane settles for a seven-point deficit, 37-30, a minute 40 before halftime. Long pass, Jordan for Doherty. Perkins, Peterson, Braddock. Ricky Ross the board for Tulsa, and he trapped Sam Perkins into a foul. Sam was just innocently, innocently starting to run up court, and Ricky got in front of him and forced him to fall on top, so that'll send Ricky Ross back to the line. Too bad that that is not uh, more fouls on Sam Perkins. He's picked up two. He's played most of the first half after not starting, although they have shown, Bob, that they have great depth, and that has helped them perhaps more than anything else to a seven-point lead. Ricky Ross, the front end of the one and one 37 31, 127 before intermission. And uh, both Steve Harris and Ricky Ross have 21 of those 31. At halftime, Lon Kruger, coach of Pan American's Broncos, will be talking to us. His team plays ORU in the nightcap, if you will, here in round one. Tar Heels by five. Matt Doherty. Inside for Michael Jordan, knocked away. Good play by Mike Smith. And then Jordan, after being distracted by Smith, knocked it out of bounds himself. Tar Heels, full court pressure as we look at the replay. Yeah, Michael Smith playing down low. He's more customs outside, but with the man-to-man, -man, they brought him in. And now a little pressure by North Carolina. And Mike again, Smith. Smith. And Ricky Ross breaking the press well. Vince Williams trying to grab the bounce pass, knocked it out of bounds by Braddock. Jacking back in for North Carolina. Well, actually, his first time. A 6'6", 215 junior, C. Selexum from Dudley, North Carolina. 
Ricky Ross, Mike Smith. Find a lot of talent in the state of North Carolina to fill up this great ball club. Yeah, we all know where it wants to go to school, too. Chapel Hill. 45 seconds left. Will TU play for one and try to go to the locker room down by three? I'm sure they won't do that, but I'm, I'm also sure they won't get themselves in any kind of a reckless situation and not give, give North Carolina a chance to go up by, say, seven or nine. They want to take a good shot. Steve Harris simply held on to the basketball too long. He had a chance to give it off for Ricky Ross and pass that up. And that cost him the turnover. TU's now coughed it up seven times. TU making different kind of mistakes now than they did before. Before they were getting it down low and making mistakes, and now a couple of turnovers outside. Now the Tar Heels with a chance. 30 seconds left to play for one good shot and maybe go to the locker room up by seven. They lead it 37-32. Clock shows 20. Attempted trap there by Harris, Ross, and Smith. Doherty, 10 seconds left now. They'll have to start going to the hoop. Doherty looks at the clock, five seconds. Here's Braddock outside, and they got it. Two seconds left. Wonder why TU didn't call timeout there. They had a whole bunch of them left. They could have called timeout with about three seconds left on the clock. Tried to throw it in, and the clock ran out. It's so, Ricky Ross, North Carolina opening the second half in a man-to-man -man defense. They'll do a little bit of shifting of men, though. Starting for Carolina, Steve Hale in the lineup. Off-balance shot won't go. There's Fanley with the inside, and it's knocked away. Ball will go back to the Golden Hurricane. No foul. Yes, there is a foul registered on the play. That'll be the first to the second half. And it will go. Uh, number 22, Buzz Peterson. There's Peterson on the left wrist of Bruce Fanley. This man's going to have a big second half for TU to stay in this basketball game. Jimmy had six in the first half. Shot pretty well from the free throw line so far. Yeah, TU's got to take advantage of their free throws in the second half also. They must use everything to their utmost advantage. Bruce Fanley now with seven points on the evening. Steve Harris, 12. Ricky Ross, 10. Herbert Johnson, three-point play. Steve Ballard, one free throw. Mike Smith has not scored. Second one is also good. Beautiful arch and nothing but that for Bruce, and it's now 39 to 34. North Carolina, number 25 is Steve Hale. Big Sam Perkins outside against Fanley. The shot around the perimeter will not go by Michael Jordan. Here comes the Golden Hurricane. North Carolina has not put anything on the scoreboard here in the thing on the scoreboard here in the second half. 19-11 left to go. Bruce Fanley looks like he wants to go one on one. Not wise with Sam Perkins. Smith has not made a bucket tonight. Important time of the game right now for TU, Jim. A great time to get right back in it. Don't want to wait too long. Good move by Vanley. That's going to be over the top on Steve Ballard. Well, Ballard went to the hoop and missed the shot, and then in his exuberance to pick up the offensive rebound, he picked up the foul. You'll see him right over the top there. It's only his first, so no problem there. But again, a man who's not in trouble now, Jim, but could really damage TU's hopes if he does get another foul would be Bruce Vanley, so it's something to watch at least. Perkins with a beautiful move over the top of Vanley. He got that just a little bit with a semi-fingertip roll. Great feed by Matt Doherty right there, and again, there's Bruce Vanley. He had to be careful there, Jim. He doesn't want to pick up that foul. Put it in his offhand and hit it. There's Steve Harris's first basket. He starts the second half like he started the first. 14 for the night, 41 to 36. He's 6 for 12. They trapped him, and he went up and came down. But a foul on Ross, or else that would have been traveling, as they just about had him. Second foul on Ricky Ross, second team foul of the second half. Nolan Richardson applauds the hustle, but not the official. Looked like traveling, but they got a little piece of him, evidently. 41-36, Tar Heels retain possession. Beautiful baseline move by Jordan. He and Perkins now even with... ...all of the floor, and we have three seconds. Third time in the ball game against the Tar Heels. You know, so it's so strange in college basketball, Jim. You can go weeks without seeing that call, and now we see it three times in one game, and that's 11 turnovers. 
And Dean Smith has to be very unhappy about that figure. That's and probably what's kept his team from really assuming control in this game. Veteran teams don't make that mistake. Uh, North Carolina, not a veteran team at this point. Of course, it's still so very early in the season for both of these ball clubs. TU just their fifth game, and the Tar Heels their sixth. 17-22, left to go. Ross, one on one, two! And now Ricky's got a dozen, and it's 43 to 40. All right, good basketball game. Listen to the crowd, they're getting into it. Just about everybody is in here, too. Maybe Almost. even some of the ORU fans hollering right now, Jim. They wouldn't mind seeing a hometown team beat these guys. Baseline shot, and again, that'll acquire to Michael Jordan once again. Boy, he is so smooth, Bob. He, of course, also had the game-winning basket in the national championship game against Georgetown. 45 to 40. His shot just hit nothing but net. A very pure, pure shooter. Averaging 19, he is seven away from that mark. Ross one-on-one -on -one against Jordan. Knocked away, credit Jordan, but Ross has got it back and spun it too hard. Oh, Ricky could have gone up on the near side for the easy layup, and he thought that somebody was all over him, and he went around for the underneath layup, Jim, and put too much sauce on it, and then missed it. Now let's see what happens. Oh, Steve Ballard, that'll be two on him. TU has now been called for three in this half. The Tar Heels only one. Unfortunate, that should have been an easy two and just a three-point deficit. Buzz Peterson is only one field goal. They're using Perkins out front. Keep a bit of a motion offense, but they'll, they'll slow the tempo. Shot from the corner. Beautiful save. TU would like to stop him from scoring at this end on this drive. Doherty shots no good. TU crashes the board with three players and get away with Steph. North Carolina's back and very wisely. Mike Smith will slow the pace. There's your score, 15-50 left oh. to go, and he threw it away. Well, that's what drives coaches crazy. You have a chance to make an easy pass and make the hard one. Buzz Peterson, a field goal in each half. Possible four-point swing there, Mike. Rather, Jim, instead of being down by three, to you down by seven now. Very similar to what happened to them two or three times in the first half. Good move by Bruce against Perkins. It's good. No basket. Traveling, and TU will come away empty-handed. And Nolan Richardson, realizing the momentum might be going his way against him. Looked like he was ready to call a timeout, yeah. didn't it? Here's Bruce into the lane. A couple of steps there. I guess maybe traveling's better than an offensive foul, Jim, which would have been three on him. Even had the basket counted. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a good trade-off for TU. I don't know. Back in the lineup, Cecil Exum, the 6'6 junior from Dudley, North Carolina. Nolan's got the coat off. It's time to get the business. 15-22 left to go. They still have the seven-point advantage they held at halftime. Won't let him get through. No five-second call, however. They work it back out to the point. Now a perimeter tie. Remember, there's no three-point play. There's also no clock in this ball game. So you don't want to let North Carolina too far ahead, and they'll go in the four corners on you. Here's Smith. A hit. Exum is down and piles in. That'll be a foul on Cecil number two on the Tar Heels in the half. You think Mike had a chance to make this layup? Probably not. Well, you talk about a mismatch right there. Exum, 6'6", 215. Mike Smith, 6'2", 185. There was no way he was going to get the two, so he'll try to get him now from the stripe. Good look at Michael Jordan checking back in. Leaving was Exum, who committed the foul. Exum showed uh, very good speed on that one as the free throw is put in. The first point of the evening for Mike Smith. Exum was actually on the other side of the board down at the North Carolina end. As Smith cleared it out, he took off and was the first man down, even beating Peterson, who was a couple of steps outside of him. 47 to 41 with 14.51 left to go. Tazi Shoestring, hope that doesn't jinx him. He hit the first one with a loose right shoestring. Mike Smith, 16 assists for the year coming into this ball game. Number 44, Matt Doherty, six points in the first half. 6'8", junior, averaging seven and five rebounds, so he's almost there. Oh, drill it in, one in. Two free throws to the six-foot junior. Back to five again, 
14.46 left to go. Halftime score was 39-32. And he overlapped the ball. Braddock got it above his right knee and turned it over. 14 against the Tar Heels, unusually high number for them. TU from the line, 14 of 18. North Carolina, five of eight. So TU a nine point advantage from the free throw line. 47-42. Ricky Ross gets away from the trap. Vanley throws it in, gets it back, goes to the hoop, two, and a foul call. A little bit of luck in a big play for the Golden Hurricane. Golden Hurricane has had a couple of advantages in the first half breaks. Oh, look at Vanley's arm come around and hit. The man in the face, it was Buzz Peterson, but he had already committed the foul. And then when Valley went to the hoop, his left non-shooting arm came around and got him right in the eye. He's got 10 points and six rebounds in the game. And perfect from the free throw line. I think Bruce wasn't psyched tonight. Oh, beautiful crowd. He had the last three free throws he had put in had just been picturesque. It is a two-point ball game. From the Connor Joe. And like he has done so many times tonight, he quiets the crowd on the TU people also. 14 for Michael, 49-45. 7 for 11 from the field for Jordan. You know what they do, Jim, that's very smart. We'll see how Steve does. All right. What they do, which is very smart, they come down and take a good shot, but they do it quickly. They don't give the crowd time to get into the game with TU on the defensive and a chance for a steal or something like that. They go to Jordan again. Block shot foul on Steve Harris. Crowd getting very emotional now. That was a second foul on Harris and the fourth team foul. And if TU can maintain their poise, this ball game could very well go to the wire. But again, Bob, you can see that they are not going to Sam Perkins, even when he is, is, is in there, which he is right now. But they are going to this guy, Michael Jordan, a sophomore. Missed it. He can put the smooth shots in from the baseline, but from the 15-foot charity stripe, he came away empty-handed. Here's the second one. Missed it. Offensive rebound going to Matt Doherty. The 6'8 junior, who's a good assist man, maintains it again to you, had the chance. They do the little things so well, don't they? They keep their composure. Of course, that's the influence of Dean Smith. He and Johnny Wooden could really keep him under control. Fall away! Block shot, but Jordan's got it back again. Well, look at T.U. playing aggressive defense. Guardy to the baseline. Buzz Peterson against Smith, the bank shot, and all good. And Bruce Stanley pulls down another rebound and dives to the floor. The oh, crowd. smoking over the other side, even Jeff Akers from ORU had to applaud Bruce Stanley. He was smiling watching that play. The crowd up, the shot by Smith, the tip by, here's Stanley, that's good. The first tip by Ballard, the second one from Stanley. Seven of those points in the second half. Right. I mean, you got the defending national champions. That makes it the headliner. It has to. Field goal percentage, you see North Carolina coming down in the second half shooting-wise. TU 6 out of 10. Tar Heels 4 out of 9. But that second game will be a good matchup because both teams are very, very hungry for a win. It's just in this instance you get to see the defending national champions, and that has to make any game a headliner. 12 minutes, 53 seconds. TU has tied the ball game for the first time in this half. They were knotted twice in the first half. Steve Hale back in directing it. They go to Perkins and a foul outside on Steve Harris. And Steve will pick up his third. And that is a fifth team foul down the Golden Hurricane three on North Carolina. Harris had a very aggressive ball game, Bob, on both offense and defense as he has tallied 16 points. And has picked up three fouls. He held them in first five minutes of the game when he scored eight points. Well, that's a good point, Jim. When you play a team like North Carolina to stay in the game and have a chance to win, you have to have different people get hot at a different time. Bruce Vanley, the man who's doing it right now. Ricky Ross for a little while. And it all started, of course, with Steve Harris. So you got to pass the momentum around a little bit because a team like North Carolina can shut down one guy if they have to. Second free throw by Sam Perkins. It'll give him a dozen points. He and Michael Jordan right now at 25, make it 26 between them. See here, Jim, we're in that situation again. TU came back to tie. Now we'll see if they can stay right with the Tar Heels. Every time they've come back and gotten this close, North Carolina has pulled away a little bit. 
Steve Harris. Michael Spitz, still no field goals tonight. They're giving the outside shot. He does not take it, and perhaps wisely so. Matt Doherty, a much bigger player, ready to lunge at him for a possible block shot. Here's Ross. He double pumps. He fires, and he hits it over the top of Michael Jordan. He has 14. Doherty quickly down, missed it. TU with a chance to take the lead, and again a rebound to Bruce Badley. Ross did it once, and he may try to do it again. They may look for Ross. Look at him. He wants a basketball. <laughs> Nine rebounds now for Bruce Fanley. Shot by Harris. Good! A TU lead. First time they've led in the ball game. The crowd applauds, and Harris has 18. 53 to 51. Tulsa. 11.52 to go. This is one way to ensure you won't see the four corners. There's that smooth shot. Nothing but net. Now Smith would like to give him the lead. Reacting on defense. There's Jordan. Goes against Harris. Drives the baseline. Harris gets him. That's his fourth foul. It should be before the shot. Which means it won't be free throws. But the way Steve Harris has played tonight, Jim, that's a bad stat for TU. There you see the bumping right there. Nolan Richardson was wincing a little bit on that one. They're going to have to get him out of there, and Ty Nielsen will come in to replace him. Both ball clubs have piled up their timeouts, so they're going to use them to their advantage. There's virtually have been none throughout this ball game, and there's except, just 11.36 left. Except for one Dean Smith called here in the second half when he was tied up, and very smartly so. There's a pass. Oh. Jordan carries it. That's Tulsa's basketball. Well, that ball should have been stolen by TU in the air anyway. Jordan thought so. That's their 15 turnover. When it hit him in the hand, he just turned it over because he didn't expect to have the basketball. Hurricane with a chance to go up by four here, Jim. Down comes Ricky Ross. North Carolina, man-to-man -man defense. Try to set a screen. They're bringing Vanley out a little bit on Perkins. Ballard, Nielsen's in the lineup, Smith's got the ball. A lot of playing time tonight for Steve Hale. It's going to be a good one for Dean Smith, just a freshman out of Jakes. There's Nielsen, 11.09 left in the ball game. Tulsa a little more patient now, 53 to 51, they lead. Ricky Ross fires, good! Oh, he's having a night, isn't he? Randy Turner was the man you saw celebrating on the TU bench. Ricky's got 16. And Harris has 18, and Vanley has 13. And a little push off inside. Tulsa had Vanley and Ballard and Smith in there. And it was on Ty Nielsen. It was called the play on the outside, the foul on the outside. That is the seven, so it'll be bonus time. Ricky was three of nine in the first half, Jim. He's three of five in this half. And he's gotten those baskets, every one of them at very opportune times here since intermission. North Carolina going to the line with the bonus early. Jordan hits it. Michael Jordan with 15. They have two players in double figures, but just about everybody that has played for them, everybody except two players, and they've used practically their whole bench, has scored, most of them in the first half. Second one is also good by Jordan. He's even now, eight points in each of the two halves, 55-53. 10.42 left to go. Uh-oh, you cannot afford that kind of stuff. And North Carolina with a chance to tie it. There 12 was, turnovers against TU. At 27 turnovers in this ball game. I think that means one thing, Jim. Tough, tough defense. Both ways. Number 42, Brad Doherty. A freshman who's shooting 68% from the field. They go to Sam Perkins, and he ties it. He and Jordan now have 40 points between them out of the 55. He's six for nine. Good percentage. They got some guys that can shoot a percentage. That's why that 48% is surprising. Hook shot. Oh, and he got it. Oh. Bruce Fanley with 15. What I a can't hook. can't believe it went the second time. Oh, man. He's Ten. five out of six. Ten minutes to go. Jordan is fouled by Ballard, who has a few to give, but now maybe not too many. That's his third. Watch this replay. Michael Jordan almost puts his head up into the bottom of the glass. Watch this. <laughs> he, almost, he almost knocked into the backboard there. Good camera work by Bruce Millon underneath the bucket. 
Our teleproductions crew here at the Maybe Center, they got to work double duty tonight. We'll have ORU and Pan American next with Jerry Vaughn, Bill Land. We'll be filling some time in between games for you and talking with John Cooper. Michael Jordan, again, another free throw. He has hit the last three in a row. Herbert Johnson with four fouls is making an appearance. Herbert three points so far, a three-point play. Ballard three points, four rebounds. And three fouls. Jordan, four in a row. 18 points for Michael Jordan. Tied again at 57. Nine minutes, 51 seconds, a little pressure. Across comes Ross. Smith, he's just been the quarterback tonight. He hasn't shot from outside. They put Steve Hale on him. Ricky Ross, and the man they're putting on him is Michael Jordan. Here's Vanley again. Good again. Turning out to be somewhat of a shootout in the half between Vanley and Jordan. He's six out of seven. But we said before, different people have to get hot at different times. Bruce Vanley just really showing some offensive power tonight, Jim, that we have not seen this year, and he's got to do that. TU has gone back to that packed-in 2-3 zone defense that they opened the ball game in, and it is really packed in. The ACC with a 19-foot three-point play this year. They, they'll be bombing away from over that zone. Shot his best. Tulsa's got the basketball, and Ricky Ross went up to bring it down. ACC is only one of two conferences that have both the three-point play and the shot clock, although it will be off the last four minutes of the game. Beautiful steal by Jordan, and Smith goes back to tie it, and Ross, and Tulsa's got the basketball. Dean Smith says, man, oh, man, how about a jump ball? It's their turn to get possession. Maybe even a foul he wanted. The shot is good by Chris Manley. I tell you, these officials are letting them play, Jim. I like it. Dean Smith's got to call a timeout, and he is angry with the officials. Good ball game. It'll be inbounded by Sam Perkins as we get ready to go. Clock down to 8 minutes, 20 seconds, and again, they just hand that ball to the freshman, Steve Hale from Jinks, and let him go, Peterson. Hale. Steve has two points, a field goal in the first half. Buzz Peterson from outside, missed it. Bruce Banley is 11th rebound. Golden Hurricane with a big, big moment, Bob, if they can get this one. He's Jim, going to instill some confidence. They did a good job of forcing North Carolina to take a shot from outside. If they can make the Tar Heels shoot like that, obviously it puts a damper on their inside game. And it really enhances TU's chances of winning this basketball game. Ricky Ross, North Carolina, pressuring the ball. Now Herbert Johnson, he's got to be careful. He's got four fouls. You know, it was just over two years ago when TU beat the defending national champion Louisville Cardinals. Here they are again against the defending national champ, North Carolina team. Ricky Ross drilled it. It wouldn't go in. It looked like it had off-balance shot was going to be in there, but it did not. Well, Capital Classic on Tulsa Cable Sports Channel 17. Glad to have you with us, and what a tournament we have underway at the Maybe Center. 7.20, TU working on an upset, but a shot is in by Matt Doherty, his first basket in the second half. Again, it should go to the wire. 61-59. TU by two, 707 left. Herbert Johnson. Ty Nielsen has passed up a couple of shots. Herbert right back out to Mike Smith. Ty Nielsen, his defender had his back to him, but passed up the shot. It's working around the perimeter. Fanley has it knocked away. And Braddock, who has only scored two points. Substitutions coming in as the ball retained by TU. There's Steve Harris. He is playing with four fouls. Interesting strategy here by Nolan. He brought Ty Nelson in for Steve Harris several minutes ago when Steve got his fourth foul. And now the team has been able to not only stay close, but keep the lead, Jim. And that's going to be a big plus. Now we have to just hope Steve can stay away from that fifth foul. It crashes into him. 
And that will be a foul on Buzz Peterson, and now he has four. Will it be a shooting foul? Will the referees think he was shooting, or was he faking this shot? They are not close to the bonus, and they will not be a shooting foul. That's only think, the fourth team foul of the Tar Heels. I think they smelled out the fact that Steve was faking a shot there. Six minutes, 34 seconds to go. 61 to 59. Mike Smith with the basketball. To you in no hurry. 61-59, and a foul on Sam Perkins. Big, big guy. Three on Big Sam. And that's two fouls in the last minute to make it five team fouls in the second half. To you showing a lot of patience, discipline offensively. It's going to be tough to do that, Jim, when you're playing the national champions and you're so pumped up and you've got the crowd behind you with a two-point lead. 6.17 left to go. It's going to be tough to work that ball around patiently for the good shot. You know, I guess the inclination is take it to the hoop and see what happens. Michael Jordan is back in, especially when it's basically not your kind of game, although Nolan has worked on that strategy a little bit, the Henderson game and also in this one. 6.11 to go. Lots of time. And Ricky Ross is guarded by Jordan. A lot of talent in that man-to-man -man matchup. Harris go. <laughs> for Steve Harris. What a night he's had. Nine Nolan teams. just hopes he can stay around long enough, Jim, to be a factor at the final buzzer. He's 9 of 15 from the field. Add Fanley's 19 and Ross is 16. It's been a three-man offensive show. 63 to 59. Backing it out, Buzz Peterson, number 22, 538 left to go. Tulsa by four. Matt Doherty inside away to Ricky Ross. There was just no place to go with that ball. Five minutes and 19 seconds. Tulsa 63 and North Carolina 59. Herbert Johnson. Steve approaching here for his career high. Whoa, well, Ross with the outside. Boom! Six, their biggest lead is 65-59. Incredible. Again, they pack in that zone defense, and somebody uh -oh. pushed off. It might be Herbert Johnson. It might be Bruce Vanley. It's Vanley, his third. Talking about Steve Harris a moment ago, his high 22 at Bradley last year. He's got 20 right now. Bruce Vanley approaching his career high as well. A credit to Bruce Bob, though he's played a lot of minutes with two fouls, and now three fouls is really no problem with four minutes and 50 seconds, unless he would pick up another one in the next two minutes. And at the line is Sam Perkins. Four, six points in this half, all field goals. He has not uh, hit a free throw tonight. Free throw is good. And that makes it 15. He did make two free throws early in this half. I stand corrected on that. The All-American, 6'9", Junior. He's got a good touch. Three for three from the line. That's... Shot is no good. He with the ball and a five-point lead. First time North Carolina has come to our city. And right now, not a memorable one. 443. Golden Hurricane. At the luncheon today, Dean Smith said he landed at the airport, got his rent a car, and it automatically took him to Jake's High School. <laughs> where he recruited Steve Hale numerous, numerous times last year. Michael Jordan picks up his third foul. Carolina just has Buzz Peterson in trouble. That's the sixth. The next one will be bonus time for them. Yeah, I think it's important, Jim, before too much time goes by to get TU to the free throw line. <laughs> Both ball clubs done pretty well from the line tonight, especially in this half. Turnovers have been cut down in this half also, but see you the last time we looked at 12, North Carolina 15. Here's Smith. The ball's rejected to Jordan, but Johnson's got it. Steve Harris. Manley hit it. Pass on it was goaltending, and Manley got the offensive board. Michael Jordan quiets him with a basket at the opposite end very quickly. He is good at that. 20 now for Jordan. 67 to 62. A little bit of a different team than we saw play OSU a week and a half ago, isn't it, Jim? 
Sure is. 3.55 to go, and I think probably Bob, you'll agree, a better team that played Henderson State there was sluggish at oh, times. Yeah. Well, I think TU's the kind of team, I think a lot of college teams are, Jim, they play to their competition. TU has had a lot of time to prepare for this game. They've had all week to prepare for North Carolina. Uh oh too far underneath, couldn't get the pass away. It belongs to the Tar Heels with 3.35 to go. North Carolina knocked away out of bounds, but they said that Ricky had stepped out before that. That was a big turnover. TU could have gone up by seven with a basket. They called a foul on Ricky Ross on the play. That's his third foul. And going to the free throw line for the Tar Heels, we'll take a look at the foul on Ross. Yeah, and reach it in. He gets him pretty good with the left hand. Timeout is called. Three minutes and 35 seconds to go, but now it's North Carolina that will try to run off four consecutive points. 67-62. Winter's cold blast with its snow and ice is just around the corner, but you can face the bad weather driving with mud and snow recaps. All sizes fully guaranteed for only $29.95 each at Robertson Tire. For icy streets, Robertson's will install steel studs, only $8 per tire. Stock rims, only $10. Robertson Tire has a complete selection of chrome wheels and high-performance tires. Also RV tires and rims. For all your winter driving needs, come see Ted Robertson at Robertson Tire, 1611 East Admiral Boulevard. TU briefly had a seven-point lead before Michael Jordan came down to make a basket. That made it five. Then the foul on Ross on the offensive side gives North Carolina Matt Doherty at the free throw line to shoot the one and one. And Nolan Richardson is talking to his ball club with just 3.35 to go. Sell out 10,295 of them here tonight. No empty seats in the Maybe Center now. Glad that thousands of folks around the Tulsa area can join us here on Tulsa Cable Sports. Not a bad night for the young sophomore. Nine of 16. Just under 60% from the field. Doherty at the line has eight points. He got a couple of free throws in the first half. For the year, not very good. Came in nine for 17. But four for four tonight. So he is... He picked up his stats immeasurably, but now is when he needs them, and he's five for five. Darty got a field goal pretty early in the ball game, and all the rest of his points in the first half were free throws. That makes it 67 to 63. Oh, it's a three-point game. Darty's in double figures, and they took the timeout to set up the press. 67 to 64. Three minutes and 33 seconds to go. Tulsa on top. Ricky. With the ball, there's Mike Smith. Hunter in the ball game, number 43, Curtis Hunter, the 6'4 freshman, and also another freshman there, Steve Hale. Perkins slipped a little bit. He's got that ankle trouble. Also a knee problem. Ricky Ross just taking the basketball, using about 20 seconds and then passing off, and now Steve Harris doing likewise. Three minutes to go. 67-64, Golden Hurricane on top by three. They trailed by seven at the half. They themselves led by seven to three minutes ago. Ten seconds more off the clock, two minutes, 50 seconds to go. Pan American and ORU coming up next here on Tulsa Cable Channel 17. That's going to be a foul on North Carolina. Steve Hale, the freshman, whistled down. That's the seventh at his bonus time now for the Golden Hurricane. One and one. Free throws here become very important as you see Steve Hale reaching down. Mike Smith to the line. Mike coming in, a 72% free throw shooter, hitting 8 of 11 this year. Got to hit him here, Mike. Jim. The reason I'm calling you Mike is because Mike Roberts from KOB Radio in Albuquerque helped us all week with the Justice Bowl, and I got you two so confused, it's driving me crazy. <laughs> Second free throw. The free throw is good. He'll have the second one. He has hit all of his points off on the line in this half. Three for four now. Call me whatever you want the rest <laughs> of the night, okay? Second one is also good. 69 to 64. Two minutes and 37 seconds. No four corners here. They've got to make something happen quickly. TU's in control. This is the guy they've gone to in the other situations, and TU realizing that, want to keep him away from the basket. They've got Ross on him and Harris out of the zone. Darty, no place to go. 
They just have not gone to Perkins. Here's the outside shot missed by Hale. Rebound foul on North Carolina. They crashed with both Doherty and Jordan. And the foul is called with two minutes and 14 seconds to go, number one on Matt Doherty. It was not a bad shot selection by Steve Hale. He just didn't hit it. And then Doherty had to go way and up and then bend back over for the rebound. Here's Herbert at the free throw line now. Johnson came into the game with a terrible free throw average. If there's anybody that North Carolina wants at the line, this would be the man. Shooting less than 30% on the year. Hits it. Make a liar out of me, Herbert. Go ahead. Perfect tonight. Nolan Richards has said at the beginning of the year that he really improved his free throws. Did not show it, though, after the first couple of games. Look at him. Herbert says, I'm not 0 for December anymore. It's another one. TU has done a masterful job at the line in this half, and they lead by seven again with 2.10 to go. Oh, look at Harris pumped up. Doherty fires. Rebound, Ricky Ross with under two minutes now. That might just about do it. You don't want to call it a victory yet. If TU gets a basket, this one might just about be over. North Carolina scrambling for the ball. Shot by Harris. Go! Nine-point lead with 145 left. They go right to the basket. T.U. gets it again. I think Dean Smith wanted a timeout. They did not see him. Tulsa's got the ball, 134. Now he can't call a timeout. Jim, it's going to have to be a disaster for T.U. to lose now. They should have it just about clinched. There's another foul. Number four on Steve Hale. What a ball game and what a victory if T.U. can pull it out. 125 left to go. Can you believe Nolan Richardson? Every time it looks like his team is just not there, they come up with a tremendous victory. We talked about the victory over Louisville two years ago, first week of December, defending national champs. I tell you, whoever wins the NCAA title is not going to want to come to Tulsa next year. <laughs> TU is 9 for 9 from the line in the half, making 10 for 10. 23 points for Steve Harris. Boy, they know it on the bench. Steve Harris has his career high now. Not a bad team to get it against. Huh? Double figures lead for the first time for either ball club. It's 11 point lead, 24 for Harris. 75 to 64, Jordan pumps and fires and misses. KU with 118 to go. That's a foul in the backcourt on Sam Perkins. What do they say, turn out the lights? Some sad people may be listening to this ball game on the 40 station radio network out of North Carolina. Perkins is fourth foul. But some happy people tuning in tonight here on Tulsa Cable Sports Channel 17. We hope to bring you a lot more of these I tell you. through the Valley season in January and February. What a week, Jim. First we get to keep John Cooper. Now we get a victory over North Carolina unless we have a total disaster here. A chance to go up by 13 with a minute 15 left. Steve Harris at the line. Dean Smith is all ready for a timeout. He's gone back to sit on the bench. TU has not missed a free throw this half. It's been a big factor. Five for five for this young man. 76 to 64. Second one is also done. TU by 13, 113 to go. And that's the basket by Buzz Peterson. And now they get the timeout. A merry, merry Christmas. 77 to 66. Grigsby's Carpets and Draperies presents a lesson in carpet value. Come on, follow me. Here at Grigsby's, you not only receive value through price savings, but in other ways as well. For example, every brand is chosen for its color selection, variety of styles, and durability. Like this Horizon carpet, it's beautiful and made with tough Ultron fiber by Monsanto. Grigsby's value. Now there's a lesson worth remembering. Grigsby's Carpets and Draperies, just west of Sheridan on 41st. 77 to 66. There it is. Tulsa leading by 11 points with only one minute and nine seconds to go. And the Golden Hurricane have possession of the basketball. Don't forget, we got another big one coming up after this one here on uh, Tulsa Cable Sports. North Carolina ranked number 17 in the nation of the AP poll coming in. This victory, Jim, 
may be with the victory tomorrow night against either Pan American or ORU could get TU in the top 20. I would have to think they're going to have to win two this weekend. People will say, well, they beat North Carolina, but if they blew it the next night, maybe they're not that good. But if they win two and go, what, five and one, they've got a great chance to crack the top 20. Second half field goal, TU, 15 of 22, 68%, 13 out of 13 from the line. That's going to win some ball games for it. North Carolina with a pressure and North Carolina with a foul on Jim Braddock. That's the first foul on him. Carolina has to put the kind of pressure on, and they have to foul within a couple of seconds. They can't let it go very far. 105 left, and there's the hack on the right wrist. Jim Braddock, the 6'2 senior. There's Nolan Richardson, clipboard in hand. He probably doesn't think the clock is counting down as fast as maybe it should. 105 still up there. I just turned around up here and looked behind me, and there was Rose just holding her hands. I think she's getting those arms ready to hug her husband once this one is in the bag. <laughs> Free throw is missed. That's the first one they've missed in the second half. You know, T.U. played in North Carolina last year, Jim. Maybe the game not as close as the final score indicated. They lost by eight, but they were down by 24 at one time. But Dean Smith knew. He mentioned at the luncheon today. He said, we were up by 24. I turned to tell my assistant coach something. Next time I looked up, we were up by eight. It didn't happen quite that fast. But he knew Tulsa was an explosive basketball team, and that's the way Nolan coaches. That should be walking. Yeah, TU got a result, got the basketball as a result of a turnover. Now they turn it over themselves. 53 seconds to go. Still 77 to 66. I don't know. Can you blow an 11-point lead in 53 seconds? It, just about everything in the book would have to go wrong. Yeah, not hardly. Here's the bank shot that goes in, and immediately they call a timeout again. They keep going to Michael Jordan, who has 22 points, 14 of those coming in the second half. Dean Smith will talk it over. The double-figure lead is reduced. Down to nine, but the clock has gone down to 48 seconds. You know, you got to like what you've seen the last couple of times. North Carolina's brought the ball down the floor as Nolan talks to his troops. Jim, they're basically out of the ball game, but they bring the ball down twice. They take a shot. They get it in, get the timeout right away. That's one of those little things that teams like North Carolina do. Well, here we are tonight on the 17th. Tomorrow night, ORU, our Pan American against TU. Also, the Cabrillo Classic in San Diego on the 29th and 30th. There's the ORU Titans schedule. We'll see them playing Tulsa or North Carolina tomorrow night. They'll be playing the Loyola team and the Detroit Titans, Battle of the Titans in January. Boy, that Cabrillo Classic something to look forward to, isn't it? TU, Villanova, Florida State, San Diego State. Wednesday and Thursday, the 29th and the 30th, live here on Tulsa Cable Sports. That's going to be a pretty tough place for us to spend the holidays, Jim. I know the fans will be concerned about us out there in the sun, but we'll try to do them a good job and keep our mind on basketball during that time. I believe TU will play in the first game the first night, which would be a 9 o'clock start Tulsa time. I don't think the home team would want to play Villanova, do you? I've read somewhere where Villanova and TU will meet in the opener, but... Here they've done it against North Carolina. Look at this show put on. The ball belongs to Tulsa. It was knocked away by Jordan. Dean Smith wanted a traveling call. They used eight seconds. It's 39 left. Well, we'll see it here. Ricky sliding. Well, maybe he got rid of the ball before he took those two steps. I don't know. I think he did. This time, Michael Jordan knocks it away. Again, it's to use ball. 37 seconds to go. Only one off the clock that time. Ricky Ross throws it. Nobody there except Michael Jordan. Now, you don't want the three-point play. He was fouled outside. That's going to be it for Steve. Count. Steve Harris has five. But not a bad time to get him with 34 seconds left when you've scored 23 points. What a great game by the sophomore tonight. He should get a standing O. 26 points. Let me correct myself. What a great night for him. Look at the free throws, too. His career high, he had 22 against Bradley last year on the road, Jim, so he picks the best teams to have his best games against. He came in averaging 12 and well beyond that, so he picks up 14 five ball games. He'll bring that to about a 15 per game average now. One and one for Michael Jordan. He's got 22, make it 23. These are the kind of points Carolina wants when the clock's not moving. 77-69. They can bring it down to seven here with still some time left. It is. 
Do not call a time up now, but they do get a foul in the backcourt, and now Michael Jordan picks up number four. And there's 31 seconds to go. Clock is moving very, very slowly. Tulsa has seen their 13-point lead almost cut in half. There's the announcement of Steve Harris, all-time high, 26 points. And Ricky Ross goes to the line. Four for six. You know, if you saw Herbert Johnson open there a minute ago and wonder why Ricky didn't give him the ball, that may be a reason right there. TU, even though Herbert's three for three tonight, would rather have Ricky Ross at the line in this situation than Herbert Johnson. 78 to 70, 31 seconds. Ross can go six for eight. Improved to 75% here. The free throw is in. Now he's got 20, Van Lee 21, Harris 26. 79 to 70. Perimeter shot is missed. Jordan again, the money man, makes it 26 for Michael Jordan and Dean Smith, whose instructions are, call a timeout after you make any field goal. He's done it three times, seven-point lead, 22 seconds to go. Ball belongs to Tulsa, we'll keep it here. There's that bank shot, and what a sophomore this Michael Jordan is. Dean makes you earn it, doesn't he? You're up by 11 with a little over a minute left, and gosh, you play about five minutes more, and you're up by seven with 22 seconds left. It seems like when you beat North Carolina, it takes an eternity. Tulsa still should be in control of this one, Jim, because North Carolina just about out of timeouts at this point. Nolan with that clipboard that he has carried for the last six or seven minutes, diagramming how they want to spread it and keep it away from North Carolina. 22 seconds remaining. Some very attentive listeners there. Got to be a lot of... A lot of happy people around there with just 22 seconds away from what everybody in the country will call an upset and probably is, but it really might not be after the season. Just, and again, any time a Missouri Valley team beats an ACC team, they're going to call it an upset. Sure. Well, anytime anybody beats the defending national champions, I don't care if it's uh, Virginia, they might call it an upset right now. There's no, there's no telling, Jim, what this victory could do for TU down the road into the Valley season and beyond. 20 seconds to go. Again, though, you want to make it back-to-back. -back. You don't want to come back flat tomorrow night against their opponent. Whether it be ORU or whether it be Pan American, that'll be a foul. Nolan wants a two-shot foul. They will have to settle with a one-and-one. Foul on number 44, Matt Doherty, his second. Only four more seconds ticking off the clock. We're at 18 and counting ever so slowly. <laughs> this is worse than a space launch. TU in the second half, free throws, 15 out of 16. 16 out of 17. Mike Smith, who does not have a field goal tonight. Jim, that is around 95%. You can't shoot any better than that without being perfect. All of his points have come from the line. He has five total, 71% right now for him. He misses. 80 to 72, 16 seconds. They give it to Jordan, and they let Jordan go to the hoop, and he hits it, and again, they call a timeout with nope. 11 seconds. Foul. Foul underneath by Doherty. It's uh, TU's going to go to the line at the other end, yeah, so it'll no, be a foul. No, no timeout. timeout here. Doherty fouled underneath just as the basket went in, so it does count, but TU goes to the line at the other end for a one-on-one -on -one with Ricky Ross. Score it, Michael Jordan's 27th and 28th. Well, let me put it this way. Ricky Ross trying to fake the official into thinking he was shooting. It's Bruce Vanley. 11 seconds to go. Bruce Vanley, it's been a long time since he scored. But look at him, five for five from the line at 21 points for the night. His free throws have all been just like that. Now, if Bruce can hit this last free throw, he'll tie his career high which is 23 at Southern Illinois last year. He also had 11 boards in that game. Dean Smith diagramming the fans being brought in on that particular stat. TU's got everybody spread out of the lane. The free throw is good. 23 for Bruce Family. It's a seven point ball game. 10 seconds to go. Jordan drives, puts it up, missed one. Perkins crashes and doesn't get it. Three seconds, two, one, Herbert! Yes, it counts and it's over. What a way to finish. I thought he was gonna slam it in, Jim. 84-74. Can you believe this TU team? They just keep beating the big boys, don't they? Beating them in convincing, convincing style 
the Golden Hurricane raising the one finger up in the air. It is time to celebrate in the locker room of the Maybe Center as the Golden Hurricane has just given a lot of fans a big, big tribute here in a pre-Christmas victory by 10 points over the defending national champions, the Tar Heels of North Carolina, who now have lost more ball games than they lost all year last year. Their record three and three. Look at the ball just hang for Herbert Johnson. Herbert, why didn't you slam it in? <laughs> I guess it all counts. What a great, great ball game. And again, this TU team just continues to amaze. There's your final score, and we'll be back.